thank you to everyone who's been waiting so long for me to get back to doing a new design on a stone. Today's inspiration came from the beautiful Mount Baker Theatre here in my hometown. My daughter did a production here of The Wizard of Oz and we just fell in love with the beautiful chandelier on the ceiling. So I thought I'd paint a stone in these colors. We're going to be using a natural beach stone today and as always I'm going to be painting it black on the front and on the back and then uh, spraying the back side with a clear acrylic to do the prep work on the stone. I am going to be using my palette today but also these wonderful little paint cups from Artist Loft that I picked up at Michael's because when I'm designing it takes me a long time to figure out what I'm going to do. So I thought I'd use the paint cups to help preserve my mixed up paint. And today I'm going to be using this Artist Loft Heavy Body Acrylic and then mixing it myself with a pouring medium. I'm using the gloss medium here and just experimenting with the viscosity. I want it to be a, a good dotting thickness about the thickness of yogurt. And then on a couple of the colors I'm going to be using the iridescent medium. And you can just experiment with these and see what you like the best, what results you get. So I've got a nice collection of colors there and I'm also trying out this Princeton brush. It's angled so you can really get it in some tight spaces and I thought I'd try it out to see if I liked it better than my dotting tools. So this is just a simple way to show you how to find the center of your stone. I'm just cutting out a circle that fits on top of my stone nicely and then folding it in half and folding it in half again and snipping off the end and then laying it back on top of the stone and marking the center with a General's charcoal white pencil or any pencil will do. I'm also marking the fold marks and then um, you can connect those to give you grid marks or you can fold the paper circle again to give you even more lines to help keep you straight when you're designing your mandala. I'm using these wonderful tools from the Happy Dotting Company. Hi Angela, thank you for sending these to me. It's a wonderful starter kit, has everything you need. I've got the first dot on there and I just flattened it. I swirled it around because I know I'm going to be doing top dots later. But as I worked my way around, I realized that I had sort of off centered my yellow dot there. I didn't really set it up very well. And then when I tried to do my first two rows, they just got a little wonky. There was too much space between some of the dots and I knew that that was going to become a problem. So I just wiped the whole thing off with a wet paper towel and started again. This time I decided to go without the guidelines and uh, I'm just going to sort of freehand it and that always seems to work for me. I, I The lines kind of give me a, a little bit of vertigo so I like to work without them. So here I'm on my second row. The first row was white. The second row is kind of this pale yellow and now I'm moving up to the red tool with the bright yellow dots. Sorry, my camera keeps going out of focus here. And then I went back to the smallest tool to do some little small dots in between those yellow dots. And then I'm going to go to my fourth row, which will be a very bright orange. Now I'm going to red and I'm going to skip a dot. I'm flattening those down again because I know I'm going to be doing top dots later. And here I'm going to try the brush to walk some dots around here. Now some, some gals are really, really good with this brush, but I found that it was a struggle for me. I kept pressing too hard and then the dot was too big because I'm used to using a metal tool. So I really kind of had to work at it and it wasn't very much fun for me. I think I've just spent too many years with my dotting tools. So I decided to just switch back because <laughs> I could do it so much faster. It's a wonderful tool in Angela's kit. It has a large end and a small end. And I'm on the large end here doing a bright orange dot between the petals. 
Now I mixed up a beautiful metallic fuchsia using that iridescent medium and I'm going to walk three dots at the end of that petal. And I'm really loading these, I want these to have a thickness to them. And then I walked up some pale purple dots just to finish that petal out. And now I'm going to do some swishy swipey things here with my neon pink. I'm going to do three and connect them at the point just to give us a little bit different shape to work with. Just makes it more interesting the, the more uh, shapes that you have in your mandala. As long as you're repeating it on all sides, it will look cohesive. So I did the little swishy things all the way around and then thought it was time to bring in that beautiful blue that's on the outside of the chandelier. I'm going to be doing top dots on those later, so I flattened them down. And then added a medium purple dot on the edge of that, and then two light blue dots. I just added a little bit of white to that cobalt. And I added a little white to that really bright neon pink just to brighten it up a bit to do these two pink dots. I did that all the way around. And now I'm adding another purple dot. And I'm adding three plum dots to the outer edge of that. And I'll be walking those up in a little bit different color. Let's see how that looks before I finish walking those up. And I decided to create a little bit darker fuchsia. I mixed the color flash with the magenta uh, from Golden Fluid with a little bit of the iridescent medium and it gave me a very nice dark fuchsia to finish walking these dots up around that purple dot. I knew my space was going to get pretty tight in here so I needed a paint that was really going to stay put and not run into the other colors. Now I'm adding uh, two cobalt dots here. There's just barely enough space for two. I did that all the way around and while that's drying I'm going to do some of my top dots putting the pale yellow on top of the bright yellow and then the medium yellow orange top dots on top of the bright orange and then the bright orange on top of the red and a white top dot in the very center. I decided to add an iridescent purple top dot on the cobalt blue I thought the blue was just a little bit too dominant. I wanted it to uh, blend in a little bit better with this purplish outer core. So I did the top dot on the blue. And then I added sort of a, a medium pink on top of the purple. Now I'm going to be adding a lot of iridescent gold top dots because there's a lot of beautiful gilded edges to this Mount Baker Theater architecture, the Moorish architecture. Lots of gold. So wherever I have space I'm just putting in a gold top dot. I'm putting it at the end of the swooshy marks and then I'll be putting it at the point of the swoosh mark as well. I also put gold top dots on top of the red
and I'll be putting it on top of that purple top dot. So now there's three on the blue. And I thought I needed it to fill in along the edges. I wanted a gilded edge to this design. So the first thing I did was just walk some dots around that purple. And now I'm adding two medium gold dots and then a large gold dot at the end of the purple petal. Carefully do that all the way around. So this creates a, a gilded edge to the stone. Trying not to tip the stone so far that I smudge the other end of it. It's no fun when the stone slips and you smudge your paint. It's totally fixable, it's just frustrating. So once I got all the way around, I decided that I had just enough space with the smallest tool to walk those up a little bit more. Just to give it a little bit more finished look. I did that all the way around. Almost done. I thought I needed one more change here. I put a light blue dot on top of that purple. Blue on top of purple or purple on top of blue just gives a, a beautiful periwinkle color. So here it is finished after it's dried and you can see that there's nice texture to the paint. The colors really seem to glow in low light which was what I was going for because when you're in the theater the lights come down the chandelier just glows. And it worked! <laughs> I'm so happy it worked! I hope you give this design a try. This is kind of a large stone. You could do it on a canvas too, that would be beautiful. Thanks for watching everybody!